So I remember uh, as a, a young priest, I was doing a, a mission, a parish mission, and I came across this, this uh, a man, a good man, more or less. We're all, we're all imperfect. But this guy, once we got talking, he, it was interesting, the difference between what he thought and what he did. Just the way, like, uh, when it comes to the way we see ourselves, um, I kind of need a blackboard now to show this, but if you can imagine kind of an XY diagram, right? Um, there's the, the plus plus, plus X plus Y. That's the part of ourselves that we know and the parts of ourselves that other people know. Say, for example, Ashton can sing. She knows it and we know it. There you go, right? But then there's parts of us that other people know that we don't know. So people can really see that maybe this person's actually, you know, really generous or really amazing, but if you ever said it to them, they go, oh, no, 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 I'm useless, no, no, no. So sometimes there are parts of us that other people know that we don't know. Sometimes there are parts of ourselves that only we know, you know some of these things that happen inside. No one else can see it. No one else knows. No one else what I, knows what I struggle with or what I have to deal with. And there's part of us that no one knows. I don't know it, and you don't know it. Maybe like an untapped ability. You know, maybe, maybe Liam Coyle can tap dance, and he doesn't know it yet. We don't know, but it will eventually be uh, un, un, you know, unveiled to the glory of God the Father. Uh, so, so, you know, maybe in time it'll happen. So when we look at ourselves, we don't always know ourselves as we think we do. We, 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 I think we have this notion that we know ourselves and then everyone else doesn't know us. No one else knows us, you know. So, but, but I know myself. At times we don't. At times we, don't. At times we have really, we, we don't necessarily know our motivations for doing something. So I'm doing something and I'm doing it often and uh, assiduously. And, but for what reason? Why, why are you doing this? Why do you do this? Uh, so this man, um, he's, he was a father of two, uh, married, a uh, lovely wife, and um, growing in the faith and so on. And, but he said, yeah, I'm just struggling with a few things, you know. Um, just business is, 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 is tough. I'm self-employed, so <clears throat> if I want this thing, this thing to work, it just takes an awful lot of time. And overtime, and extra overtime and weekends, and then at night, there's kind of further planning. And, um, and you know, but it's, uh, we've got this new girl in the office now, and she, she's great, like, she's just really, she's really, really good, she's really efficient, and, um, you know, she's really pleasant company. And uh, it's just, you know, sometimes after work, it's kind of, it's nice to stay on for a while with her, you know, just, just for, for the chats, like, and, uh, well, I mean, if I'm honest, like, I think there's something kind of, you know, really kind of console, oh, I could see where he was going, okay, I'm thinking, I think he can all see it too, okay, hopefully he can, all right, especially anybody in hoping to be a priest, you've got to pick up on these things kind of quickly, okay, so, so like, you know, we stay behind after work, and it's just nice to, you know, just, after the stress of the day and everything going on, just to spend some time with her and, and, and talk, and, uh, and, uh, no, just on the weekend on occasion, then we meet up, and I was, okay, I can, can I just butt in now, um, all right, okay, uh, it says in scripture, right, there where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And maybe in kind of simpler English, where you put your time, that's where your heart is. Where you put your time, because where your treasure is, there's where where's my treasure, my treasure is my family. Is it though? Is, I mean, you say it is, but where do you put your time? It's, it's very easy to say. We, we, often we know what the answer should be. You know, so as a priest, uh, what's your treasure? Oh, God, God, God is my treasure, you know, but do you, play your, do you pray your liturgy of the hours? Do you spend all of your free time watching the news, reading newspapers and playing golf? Uh, or in, in your free time, in, in like the, the time that you have available to you, your fun time, do you ever spend it with God? My time, time, not just this like, notion of where my treasure is in some way up there. No, practically. Because if I don't give my time to God, then he's not my treasure. If I don't give my time to my family, then while the note we, I know as a father, as a mother, they should be my treasure. If I don't give them my time, then they're not. They're actually not. It's, it's a, I think it's really important to be kind of concrete uh, about these notions. Otherwise, we can find ourselves investing a whole load of time in things that are entirely unimportant and missing the opportunities we have while we have them. Uh, St. Paul goes through a rather extensive list of 
ways in which he has suffered for the name of Christ. So he's giving his time preaching and teaching and traveling. Okay? Now, obviously, at the beginning of anything, at the beginning of any initiative, there's going to be a lot of opposition because people don't like change. So Christianity, it's only, it's only beginning, right? St. Paul is speaking about this. You may, maybe you heard of things going on in Jerusalem and this, this, this guy who died tragically. Well, he is Jesus. He's the son of God. Okay, it's a big concept. Sit down now and I'll explain it to you. It's like this is, this, is, this is something really, really new. Jesus was relatively unknown, so you're bringing a whole new idea, way of life and understanding of God to people. Some loved it. Some hated it. Some wanted him dead. So he's flogged and cast out of cities and beaten with sticks and stoned on numerous occasions. But he gives 100% of his time to the preaching of this good news. Let's never forget the gospel isn't just a name of a, a type of a letter or something. It's the good news. The good news that even though we have fallen and we're sinful, God is infinitely good, merciful and loving and willing to forgive us if, if we want that forgiveness, if I open my heart to it. So he goes through all this list, and again, but not, 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 not to boast, but to say that this, this is what the faith means to me. And in fact, if, anything, if, I'm going to, if I'm going to boast about anything, I'm going to boast about my weaknesses. Kind of a, diff, kind of a contradiction in terms, really. You know, I'm going to boast about my weakness. What? Why, why would you do that? That's going to make you look less credible. No, but he, he boasts about his failures, even like the, the thorn in the flesh that he, that he describes, who knows what, what that actually is, but there's some sort of a, a ball and chain dragging him back. And he, he calls out to the Lord, and says, Lord, what am I supposed to do with this? You know, the, the evil I don't want to do, I do. The good that I know I should do, I don't do. And the Lord says to him, my grace is enough for you. And my strength is made manifest in your weakness. So, so we don't have to be, we don't have to be perfect, but we do have to try. It's a, again a kind of an interesting balance. We, perfection isn't going to be something that we, we can manage on our own, but we do have to try. It's just like any. I mean, it, 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 excuse the simplicity of, of of the analogy, but any kind of a county team, any hurling team, any football team, you're aiming for championship credentials you know you're, you're aiming to win you have to you're aiming for the final there's no point joining a team and sure sure might have a game or two before we get knocked out imagine living in Leitrim or Longford or any of those wonderful places that don't have maybe such a long history of GAA success but like when you sign up for those teams I mean you still have to turn up for training and you still have to take the knocks and the broken fingers and uh, one of our girls was telling us today, when we were playing camogie, I mean, shin guards were recommended, but if you wore shin guards, you were just such a wuss, so none of the girls wore shin guards, <laughs> you know. So you know, you, <laughs> you know you're going to take the occasional slap to the shin from the thin side of the hurley, the edge of it, when, when they're not looking. One of our girls, she was sent off regularly for that. Um, so she's, she's, a, she's a saint now, but... <laughs> uh, so she'll, 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 give you, she'll, she'll tell her testimony sometime. But... Uh, so you know you're going to have to take hits and knocks and to be honest when it comes to sport the chances of, of success qu quite often are very very remote right I say if you live in the certain teams certain counties that, that just objectively speaking right, the, the chances of winning or actually getting any sort of medal at all are actually quite remote but they do it anyway our faith is different. It's, there's, there's, there's plenty of podium space, right? It's called heaven, and the Lord has gone there to prepare a room for us if we want it. So we can all be winners. We can all be successful, but we do have to try. And there will be knocks on the way. And I just I love it in Jesus' uh, prayer with his apostles in John 15. He says, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. You do not belong to the world. I have chosen you out of the world. That's why the world hates you. 
Remember that I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. Okay, so we've got these, these two ideas this morning. That the faith, I was going to say, could well cost us. I think it, it, we, we shouldn't be naive about it. In today's world, the faith is going to cost us. Just because as I said, society has moved and is moving quite quickly away from God, so more and more we're going to discover that, that we're different. We don't think like the rest of the world. I'm not saying, not saying that we're so much superior. We're better, I'm not saying we're better than people, but the way we act and think and choose and vote and dress and speak and drink, everything is different because of our faith. We are different. Get used to it. That's just, we, I think we just have to embrace that. Do you know what I mean? We're going to be different. Embrace it, get used to it, and love it. Because that's the way it is. And, but what's the purpose of it? So it's, it's going to cost us something, right? So it's going to be, you know, uh, it's something that's very difficult for young people at times to be, to be different, to not be like everyone else. You know, like, have you ever seen these little groups, clumps of young people? And they're all wearing exactly the same jeans and all wearing exactly the same tops and all have more or less exactly the same hair. And you're like, well, it's, oh, clones. <laughs> Look at this. Do you know, because they want to fit in, have to fit in. They're all wearing black hoodies, black hoodies, black hoodies it is. They're all wearing torn jeans, tear my jeans, tear my jeans, you know. So whatever it is, just be the same. Whatever you do, don't be different. Uh, it's just scared to death like I'm not fitting in. So it can be a, a, a very intimidating thought to think I'm not, I'm not going to be like everyone else if I follow the Lord. Or I could outright, as St. Paul describes, I could outright be beaten, rejected, outcast. But what's the flip side, the positive side of all of this? The Lord tells us in today's Gospel, Matthew 6, do not store up treasures for yourselves on earth where moths and woodworm destroy and thieves can come and steal. But store up treasures for yourselves in heaven where neither moth nor woodworms destroy them and thieves cannot break in. Anything we do for love of God Right? The return on this investment is a hundredfold for all eternity. For all eternity. My dear friend in that mission, renouncing his will, which I had to tell him in no uncertain terms, uh, that this friendship with this lady type person, uh, that had to stop immediately, like yesterday, because he was risking his whole family. Where you put your time, that is where your treasure is. Your family is at home waiting for you. Get your self out of the office and get home to your wife and kids and be a father to them and be a husband to your wife because where you put your time that's where your treasure is and your treasure cannot ever be work and cannot ever be a friendship with someone outside of your family so much so that it's to their detriment so where we put our time that's where our treasure is if i put my time I'm investing my time in my faith. The return on this is, is, is eternal. So, yes, it will cost us something. But as I say, like 10,000 years into eternity, we're only getting started. So the, the 80, 85, 90 years of our life here, in comparison to eternity, even if there are crosses in that life, and, and there will be, they will pass. They will pass. Eternity will not. So once the chips are down, once the dust has settled on this life, and once we're gone, eternity begins. And the joy of being in the Father's house and seeing what fruit any cross I had to bear brought for all eternity. Get just seeing, seeing the glory of God, the, the consolation of God, the, the presence of the angels and saints and our Blessed Lady. And, and just to, to be enveloped in this, in this uh, completely different existence where, where everything is love because I'm taken into God himself. Anything we've had to suffer here, difficult as it is while we're here, or anything we've had to suffer would make sense then. So we ask the good Lord to teach us and to guide us to invest in heaven to store up our treasure there, not here on earth. All the stuff here will pass. For there where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen.